Hello my friend, welcome to the Alderman Islands, an offshore archipelago emerging from deep water, home to a spectacular variety of fish and other marine life. Diving down on the upcurrent side of this pinnacle and peering down into the deeper water, we can see there are huge schools of blue mau mau. Next dive, we get down a little bit deeper and try and merge ourselves in the school. Perhaps this can draw other fish in because they don't know what we are. But unfortunately, it does make it really hard to see outside of the school as well. A pink mau mau are highly prized fish on the spear, but are currently a no-take species due to recent events in the Coromandel. Two spot demoiselles are another fish that we commonly encounter in these areas of high water current and deep drop offs. Among them often is Cohera, excellent bait fish, really good indicative species for other things like kingfish and John Dorries. However, they're also great eating on their own. As we move into summer, we will encounter more and more jellyfish. Jellyfish that ride warm ocean currents south into our southern waters. While tasty, Kohiru aren't usually very big, so to make a meal, you generally have to take a couple of the things. However, that's not a problem. They're great to hunt. If you want to get close to fish, get close to the bottom. Fish are far more likely to come up and check you out if you're not hovering mid-water, looking like a fool. The only things that really do that are sharks, seals, things that hunt fish. This day, me and Charlie were taken out by local scuba divers, Simon and Jake. They were kind enough to bring us out on their boat, secret men's business, to head out to the back of the Aldis for the day, hit the pins, and shoot some fish. Kohera have very soft flesh, so you want to aim to get your shaft somewhere in the head gill plate area, just to make sure it doesn't tear off. With that, we're off to the next spot. We're going to jump in on another pin and see what's here. Upon swimming up to the upcurrent side of the rock, greeted by a nice kingfish, escorted by a huge school of carpi. I take a dive down into the school to see what's going to approach me, what I can get a good shot on and what I'm happy with. Out of the school I spot a couple trevallies. One of them approaches quite close to me and gives me a good shot at it. However, I make a mistake. I aim too low, hitting the fish in the guts, a shot that I can already see tearing out. I know I'm going to have to play this fish or I'm going to lose it. Trevally also have extremely soft flesh. As well as that, they're very hard fighting. Almost all of the Trevallys I've lost have been due to gut shots exactly like this one. If you hit them below the lateral line, there's a good chance you're going to lose the fish if you don't do everything that you can and cross your fingers. Charlie goes down to try and put a second shot on the fish but doesn't get presented with a very good opportunity. So he does the right thing and doesn't pull the trigger. Soft, yeah, grab the line. I grab the Rob Allen 110 roller off Charlie and shortly after I'm on my way down to try and secure this fish. I'm determined. I got Charlie holding onto the line. I know if I don't make it happen now, I'm probably going to lose this. I line up, get too close for the fish, spook it, and take a terrible shot, missing it completely. So I get in there with my hands and grab a hold of the fish. I let go of this other gun because it's on a float line. A sensible option for most people in spearfishing. However, I like to use a reel. When you put your shaft into a fish, it is your responsibility to make sure that that fish comes home with you. We're not out there trying to injure fish, maim them, and then release them harmed. So close to a fish. Yeah. Oh yeah. I went to take the shot and then it just went in front of a rock and started spazzing out and I was like, yeah, I took a shot on your gun, but I missed them. Yeah. Is there a school of them, or just by itself? I got up to the rock as the kingfish swam at me. I was going to take a shot at him, and then like some kawai came through, like a big school of kawai. And then among them was the truth, and I just shot the truth. 
stoked with that one nice big trev can never complain with those one of my favorite fish to eat possibly my favorite fish to hunt always stoked when i shoot a trev such beautiful fish and into the float with that one happy days putting a reel on my gun has changed the way i dive i love using a reel so much the freedom it gives you is unparalleled in recent times the pink mau mau populations of the ottoman islands has been relentlessly exploited and due to that we're currently in a voluntary no take a rahui meaning these species are protected for the time being while it is appalling that some people will commit such heinous acts it is relieving to know that people will band together and protect our natural resources in such a way when it really comes down to it. Underneath the pink mau mau, I spotted a different kind of fish. A kind of fish so pretty, I just had to have a closer look. A splendid perch. The kind of fish I've only ever seen a couple times in pins such as this, far offshore in deep water. The colors on this fish were vibrant, breathtaking, not dissimilar from many fish we have here, but it looks like it would be more at home on a coral reef, out in Rarotonga, not in the cold murky waters of New Zealand. However, magnificent fish. What is it? It's a fucking pinky, isn't it? Nah. That's real cool. Look at the colours on that thing, that's crazy. This is the first splendid perch that I've ever shot, and it will likely be the last one. I did eat it and it was tasty, but these are fish that I've only ever seen a couple times and never in great abundance, so I don't think it's fair to target them to eat. Trevally on the other hand, well that's fair game as far as I'm concerned. I love hunting Trevally, I love eating Trevally, I love shooting Trevally, and they seem to be reasonably common. Recently I've been having more luck than ever in terms of actually finding Trevally. I put a lot of effort into these fish, seriously. When I go out, a lot of the time I'm just looking for where the trevs are at. I'm looking for up current areas where there's krill, not necessarily bait fish, because a lot of the time you find trevally, they're going to be feeding on really small microorganisms. Diving down into the school, they will approach you, but they're also really flighty at the same time. Here I managed to line up, get a perfect line up, and get a double. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened, potentially the flopper don't open on the second fish but both of them managed to rip off, or slip off, depending. While I was out this day, I came across a couple of these fish. I have absolutely no idea what it is, so if you know, please let me know. I would love to hear. Alright, that'll wrap it up for this one, folks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Comment if you want to see more action from the Alderman Islands this summer. This episode's sustainability message is... Don't shoot fish if you don't know what they are.